Hello, everybody. Spider here. Coming soon podcast, of course. Coming to you once again. Uh, I'm on location, of course, here in San Antonio. My guest, Franco, tell us, where are you at, sir? Right now, I'm uh, out of my home office, downtown Chicago, right off of Navy Pier. But the home base is uh, Melrose Park, Illinois, for Zagoni Studios. Yes, sir. And of course, when you say on st uh, studio, as far as location, are you guys set up at home as well, like to be able to work on certain projects? Absolutely. So myself and Janelle, basically, we work from multiple locations. The rest of the crew is literally in the factory and studio and warehouse almost seven days a week. Oh, wow, man. And of course, I, I know I, uh, I fumbled earlier and asked you if you guys were done, but I mean, you guys are never done, right? Not really. Not really. <laughs> we have people who um, are larger customers who want products earlier on in the year so they can consolidate and open up their temporary stores later on. So we have to deliver those actually now. So within uh, the next month, we're delivering all of those guys. And uh, there's plenty of uh, customers, larger customers who are taking items online because of course the horror business and Halloween is no longer just one day a year. It's uh, sure. it's 365 days a year. No, definitely. I mean, especially for, for companies like yourself that have to be making this stuff on the, uh, for, you know, get, getting ready for those larger orders. Cause that's, as well, I mean, you guys are selling online. So, I mean, you guys have to be, have stock as well. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, as far as uh, the way it began, man, can you tell us a little uh, as far as behind, you know, history, as far as how this started? I mean, who started this in the beginning? Sure. So the original were my partner's father and uncle. The uncle was uh, Bob Zagoni and uh, Phil Sr., Phil Zagoni Sr. Started with Bob because Bob had a trick shop on Belmont Avenue in the city of Chicago. And he wanted to add to his collection of items. He wanted to add Halloween because it was just starting. This is, he had started the process late 60s and really the company got started uh, early 70s. And okay. nobody has an exact date when it started because the two brothers were hashing it out and working out of the garage. But I would say early 70s is the best okay. call there. And it started as Be Something Studios. So that's why. And they, you know, they first went to Don Post and said, Don, can you get us some product for Halloween? And he goes, hey, man, I'm going to Hollywood. I got big business out there. You guys should start your own thing. And so they said, OK. And they started, <laughs> literally started out of their garage. And wow. so, now, so now it's um, myself, uh, Richie Zagoni, Tony and Phil Jr. that are partners. And we... Took it over from the uh, the father and the and the uncle in 2005, and at that time we said, why don't we just change it up a little bit and call it Zagoni Studios? Nice man. But the creators are all the same, you know. So Tony Zagoni's been making product there. Richie's been making product the whole time. Phil, all all the brothers been there. No, for sure, man. And I mean, of course, uh, when it comes to uh, making masks, I mean, what was it that attracted you to the business? I mean, what was it that did you just wake up one day and say, man, I want to do this? Or were you already kind of involved in the company? Uh, for myself? No, I uh, I grew up with the family. So we all played hockey together. You know, I met them in 1970 and uh, we all became fast friends playing hockey in each other's backyards. And uh Tony at, at that time uh, in 2003, 2004 was uh, at UL Labs as an electrical engineer. And he said, you know, my dad thinking of retiring and he wants to get out. And I goes, we have an opportunity. You want to come in? And at that time, I came in as a silent partner. My, my life was always food. I ran the French pastry school for 10 years. I was in gourmet sales for many years. So at that time, I'm like, who the hell is wearing this stuff? And how do you make business on one day a year? Now I ask myself, hey, who isn't wearing it? Exactly. And, I, it, and Mario, it, it makes me incredibly happy to put something on, maybe get a little laugh out of somebody, cheer the, you know, make them happy. Because all of the Zagoni products are literally, they come to life when you put them on. You know, they're not, I'd say a good chunk of our business is really, um, making people laugh and getting into character. So the last one I'm getting into character with that I really love is uh, 
a French chef called Jacques. So I get into characters, him, and then I introduce other masks, but um, that, that's why. And, it, and it, it's a really beautiful thing because it adheres to your face, which is unusual for you know latex masks. It moves. I become somebody else. It's a lot of fun. And, and we do this for a lot of DJs, bands, uh, comedians, podcasters such as yourself. We, it goes on and on. Saturday Night Live, we do it for. We, it's, we've been in a ton of movies. Been in E.T. The, um, in fact, the scene from uh, the, where they were in the high school gym for Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, two years ago, there was like 15 of our masks were in, and the DJs were in one of them. So it's a lot of fun then, you know? Tons of fun. No, yeah, for sure. And I mean, for, for me personally, because just like with the fight game, I mean, that's where everything started for myself, you know, doing the podcasts uh, on that side. Um, I get to meet a lot of people. I mean, I get to hear a lot of the behind the scenes stories. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you guys have quite a few, man. I mean, is anybody that's working with you guys now involved in the movie? I mean, have you guys tried getting into movies or is this, are you guys perfectly fine just making masks? No, you know, we're, we're not in the, the business of making movies, you know, it's uh we literally sign off for somebody to be able to use our product right. almost at least once a week in some kind of a, a show. or And it's all over the world, in theater, it's Japan, South Africa, all throughout the uh, Europe, Europe countries. It's, it's just a lot of fun. So we technically, although we have a good time putting them on and becoming little characters, we're not in the movie business. Um, it's quite flattering to know that somebody can grab one of our products right off of somebody's shelf, put it on and go right to work in a movie without having to alter it in any way, shape or form. That's pretty cool. No, no, for sure. And, and of course, I mean, you did mention a few movies as far as uh, some of your product has been in, but I mean, is there something in the future? I mean, have you guys been working with producers or movie makers out there to make masks for, for them? Yeah, we, we've done a, a few things uh, and, and still in the works. We, last year, we actually did a mask for, uh, believe it or not, Yi. So oh. got, we were developing something for him, but he, he was quite unique in that he wanted a mask that was totally without any, any holes. We said, yeah. brother, you're going you're gonna to kill somebody doing that. You <laughs> probably yourself. So let us put at least a couple of holes in there first. Yeah. And right now we're working with, uh, actually on the production side, not on the development or art side, for uh, another one for uh, Bill Shatner. Oh, man. I don't know if it's going to work out, but we're hoping that it all comes together. Um, Rubber Larry, I don't know if you guys know Rubber Larry. He's the guy who designed the mask. It looks beautiful. So, and, and we do that quite a bit, too. You know, There's quite a few designers who have their own product, but they, they're not production guys. They're, they're artists. So we help them by producing their hard work, too. Gotcha. Now, of course, I mean, when, when it comes to making masks, I mean, I see y'all's videos. And like you said, the mask does change a person because as soon as you guys put them on, it's like a whole different character. So uh, with that being said, uh, is, there, is there a movie that you grew up watching that you were thinking like, man, you know what? I wish I could have made or designed something for that for that movie. Not really. Not really. We just we don't work that way, you know, because most of them, we really don't. There's a few that have been out there like um, uh, Hooded Fear and Hack. It was in Hackle Lantern. Right. It's really right now. It's like an it, 80s slasher movie. We laugh at it and it's kind of funny, but it's more to that end, really. We like it when somebody really puts it on and, and enjoys it and brings it to life on their own. So we'd rather do, do it that way. We have a ton of fun doing it that way. And right now we're working on trying, you know, a, a while back we were trying to make, okay, let's make a pretty woman mask, right? So we, we did a couple of things. And what does that mean? If you talk to Tony, he says it's totally impossible. You know, all the beauty's in the eyes. And I'm like, come on. So we talked to him into it and we, we've had some success with it, but it's probably the creepiest mask we have. <laughs> you put it on, it looks like a doll is coming at you, you know? Talk about a freak. And we had tons of stories like that. And then back to the movies, you know, unbeknownst to us, in the movie The Town, just before it came out, the posters went up in promo pieces, right? That, that stars Ben Affleck in the movie and Robin Banks in uh, the Boston area. And they were using, and they, 
they used our nun mask, none for you. And we're like, oh man, we're in trouble. Because we were ready to produce thousands of them. And it was like September when the damn movie comes out. So we're like, we're, we're screwed. <laughs> but the mask has been selling for that. It's been selling forever. Wow. One, one of the funniest stories was an, uh, somebody, some uh, uh, newspaper journalist calls me up out of the blue and says, hey, we understand that a porn star is using your sea creature mask in all of his porn movies. How do you feel about that? I said, well, I, I hope uh, I hope he's comfortable and uh, they work out well and he's successful. <laughs> I know. What else can you say, right? I mean, right? using it in A. See, I told you, you can go into character. See how far you can take it? Oh, man, talk about character, man. Yeah, that's wild. I don't think I've ever seen it, so that's a good thing. But if he's out there making them, then I'm sure somebody is, right? Well, don't get in trouble going hunting this down, okay? Oh, no, 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 no not at all, because uh, I don't want that on my browser, man. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying the mass. I mean, I see you guys working. And, and, of course, this is quote that I've always been told, and it says, you know, you love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life. Is this kind of what you guys go through, man, when you have to show up and be like, okay, let's – have some fun and make these masks. We take it. We take a portion of each day to make sure that we put them on and have a good time with them, and then present that to the general public. Because, uh, and then to Tony's credit, because he runs the production and talked to the, we talked about it a little earlier. Uh, Michael's going. He's the third generation now, and he's uh, doing a great job. He nice. he takes care of production on the on the pouring the masks and making that making sure our numbers are correctly in it. And at the end of the day, there's a whole segment that he does with him and his father where he says, okay, dad, try this on. And so Tony will go put it on and turn right into character. Talk about enjoying your work, see? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, I see you guys working and I'm, I'm getting the kick out of it because I'm like, man, the fact that you guys are in a good mood and a good sense of humor that tells me you guys definitely enjoy what you're doing. So that's pretty cool, man. Well, we have a deadline. If you want to come in and help us, uh, today I was cutting uh, an alien's chin so we could glue it in uh, on a harness. So we got uh, about 3,000 more to go for. for this oh, one. man. I'll, I'll call Braxton and we'll fly out there tomorrow, man. Yeah, he's got plenty of muscles. He can help us pour some of those larger molds. There you go. No, yeah, you see, and uh, the mask that he has, I mean, he actually, uh, I was hoping he'd jump on this with us because, of course, I wanted him to put it on. But uh, he enjoyed it. He likes it. And, you know, right. we'll definitely get on that, man, because uh, I did want to have him plug in and, and uh, you know, both of us kind of hit you up as far as uh, what's going on with the company and, and what we can, you know, what we can look forward to. Now, of course, I mean, you mentioned as far as uh, people wearing masks, I mean, Halloween is literally our year. And because of that, I mean, on the business aspect, it's got to be good because you guys stay busy. But at the same time, I mean, are you guys like, man, let's see when we can take a break or you know, get get a breather here and there? We, uh, yes, yes, of course we do. Um, it's really kind of a strange business and that we're trying to source materials early on in the year to meet the, what's going to come up. And some of that's a little bit of forecasting and guesswork. We know what we, know what we think is going to sell, but then, you know, like this past year, after all of the presentations to the larger customers took place, we actually presented a new mask at the Haunted House show in St. Louis, which was the Jesus Christ mask. Yeah. Never thinking that that was going to be a huge hit, but it took off. <laughs> and so then we scrambled to get the wigs, put that into production, and off we go. So that starts early on in the year, and then we're you know, developing all along the way. Otherwise, we can't keep up. And then when Halloween does hit, by that time, now we're retail mode. So now, it's, you know, we're not packing big pallets worth of or containers. We're packing one bag or one box at a time. And then before you know it, it's November and we're starting the whole process again. You know, and it's somewhere around November, we take a break. Yeah. Somewhere around November, we try. But, you know, now it's Krampus is taking off. So... And we're selling Santas and like, yeah, it's getting tough. So please do come in and give us a hand. We'd love to have you come in and 
And maybe the next time we do this, you can follow me through it now or follow Tony or Mike and we'll take you through the factory so you can see the different. Um, no, yeah, definitely get it behind the scenes because I mean, I can only imagine I've worked in factories and I know sometimes it can be hectic, but you know, the fact that uh, everything runs uh, with a rhyme, you know, everybody's on the, on their own little uh, timing, you know, I, I think it'd be pretty cool for us to go behind the scenes and actually get a little bit of that. That'd be pretty awesome. We have uh, within the factory, there's an entire vault and the vault for us is all of our old masters. So that's super, super unique to come through uh, and take a look at that. Uh, but uh, along with that, you'll see several employees that have been with us over 20 years. Yeah. Quite great because they started with the father and the uncle and some passed over to us now and and even their daughters or sons are with us. So that's pretty cool. No, you see, and, and as far as the old models, I mean, I know you guys had posted at one time, like some of the old, the masks that, you know, they, they were making back then. Are, are you guys remolding those or are you guys just doing uh, like new ones when it comes to the, uh, the mask? So there are some pieces that we've remastered so that we have a brand new. It's basically a new, it, we refer to that as just a continuation and a production piece. But the basically the collector pieces, really, we try to pull them only from the master mold. And there's just a limited number before they're done. Right. So, yes, we do that. Um, uh, and, and then we try to communicate that properly to everybody so everybody knows what they're getting. Uh, drives that Tony absolutely crazy that he has to paint it like they painted it 40 years ago because you know, he was a kid when he was painted and he never liked that paint job. So when he gets a chance, he wants to repaint it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> the collector wants it exactly like he remembers it back in the old uh, Franco-American catalogs or the something catalog. So, yeah, so that, that's what happens with that. No, no, for sure. You see, and one of the things I've always seen, especially like an assembly line, because when it comes to uh, somebody having to paint, a uh, certain mass a certain way. I mean, there, there's there's follow-ups. You know, sometimes the color doesn't stay or it, it doesn't work well. I mean, do you guys keep those masks or do you guys just like get rid of them? Uh, so far, we haven't had we haven't had too many problems with that. In that the entire family is on the floor at all times. Um, and yes, there are a few times where somebody will go off the rails. Like, you know, sometimes we'll just do a, you know, we'll actually try to communicate that to the to the general public and they get a kick out of that kind of stuff. So they'll, they'll buy those. Otherwise, if we really don't like the piece, it's got to go. No, no, for sure. You, you see, and, and I'm a, the reason I'm asking that is because there's a, I'm real big on the toy collection line and there's toys, you know, from He-Man and Star Wars that had like something different that people go crazy about because they, they call it a variant. And it's just the same mask, but something's different, whether it's off, the color's off, you know, it's different. I mean, that's what I was asking because I said, man, if you guys come across those, I'd be interested in one of those personally. Okay. We've got, <laughs> we've got, we've got, we've got a few, we've got a few out there. Most, most of what happens is Tony will take a, a flyer on something and pull a few pieces out and then he'll, he'll either have an artist painted or he'll do it himself because he wants to try something different. Right. You know, and. Yeah, so that's that's where that's coming from. But sure, yeah, nice. absolutely. And we're always taking an an older sculpt and then reconfiguring either the fur, the hair, the hood, the hat, uh, facial hair, no facial hair. You change these, like I was telling you about Jacques. Yes, that's literally that face is the old man mask. It's the super soft old man. But now he's got a goatee, he's got a mustache, got a you know he's got a younger looking hair piece on, and now he's a different character. <laughs> so no, you guys come here. you guys have you know what you should travel up and we'll have you finish off a couple of pieces maybe that'll be one of the podcasts you guys you two guys get in there decide what you want on it and you can develop it man that would actually be killer i mean i would definitely be down for that just for the fact that you know uh having participated and actually learned a little something because that's that that'd be a trade that i would love to learn man i ain't gonna lie i mean that's definitely unique and the fact that you guys are still you know Pushing that through uh, generation to generation. I mean, I, you know, we might, have to, we might have to make a Mario mask. Ooh, man, I don't know. Yeah, man. They yeah. might... Might, we might have to do that. I don't know. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Somebody, somebody out there, you know, um, 
where I work at right now, I'm all over the store, right? And I get customers that are like, man, are you the only one working? You're like all over the store, you know? And and who knows, man? I, I can give some of these employees my uh, mask and they can be me for a while, man. See, see what I do. <laughs> That's it. You can scare them all, man. If you can be, if you can't seriously be everywhere. There you go. Yeah, definitely. And I, I laugh at it, but it happens a lot. And everybody's like, man, are you following me? And I'm like, man, I'm, I think I'm the only one working today, but how can I help you? <laughs> there you go. Well, Tony's a lot like that too. Trying to find Tony in the, in the factory is tough. He'll go from <laughs> cutting fur to pouring latex to painting latex to assembly to sewing to packing. It's insane. Usually yeah. within all in a half hour, that guy's fast. I think I lost you. Hold on, give it a second. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I think I lost it for a second. But yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the fact that the guy has his hands on everything, and I'm pretty sure everybody does. I mean, when you, when you guys are out there, I mean, if somebody, you got to pull the weight, somebody else has to jump in, right? Keep, keep it going. That's true. That's true. It's tough. But what we're thinking. And, man, right. and let me ask you, as far as masks uh, coming out this year, I mean, do you guys make new ones every year? Or do you guys keep, like you said, like the master modes and just go off those uh, every year? I literally had a video today that you guys can go check out. There's two brand new masks. One is an African American girl, and one is a, a, a little uh, heavier set girl. So we, oh. yeah, yeah. So check those out. We uh, literally doing that. I'd say every two, three weeks. No joke. Oh, okay. So cool, man. You see, I'm really asking. Yeah, because I've seen you guys post masks out there, but I didn't know if there were still like the productions from old uh, models or old, uh, you know, master uh, molds like you were saying. But uh, but yeah, I'll definitely check that out, man. Because I mean, the, the work's freaking unique. I love it. Uh, there was a uh, two vendors that were here a uh, couple weeks back that had some of your 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 product, I guess, from the the companies that they order. So you know, you guys are out there, man. Obviously, right? You guys are all over the world, man. So it's pretty cool to be able to see it out there. We keep trying. And don't forget, we do a lot with a ton with gloves and feet. People oh. forget all about that. But we, I mean, there's complete costumes that we do, but really the gloves are super, same concept, right? Same concept. It's got to be comfortable and you got to be able to be in character. Right. So now we, we're doing tons of gloves. I mean, tons. And so whether you buy our mask or somebody else's mask or you don't want to wear a mask, you can think of that to do a cosplay piece right you know you can be an elk you can be a literally a pig now or a boar we've got boar hands and boar feet it's crazy oh man i'm gonna have to look at that because yeah i i definitely want to get a a little uh i don't want to say cosplay but i want to start dressing up there's a a, a buddy of, a, of ours that actually dresses up and parades downtown just to kind of you know I guess scare people, you know, in, in a good sense. I mean, people are taking pictures with them, but I want to be. I, I told them, I said, I'm gonna follow you out there and take some photos and video, man. And you know, I want to. I, I might want to, you know, start doing that myself. So we'll, we'll look into that for sure, man. Yeah, and haunts are going now. They're the haunts are celebrating every holiday. Yes. You know, they do it all throughout. They do it for Valentine's Day. They're doing all types of stuff. I love it. It's it, it's interesting. It makes it different keeps people alive and having fun. No, no, for sure. You see, and that's what I want to do. I mean, that's why last year I was just like, man, I'm going to start enjoying this. Uh, the, the fact that I've been meeting a lot of great people like yourself, you know, at the conventions that I've been attending. And uh, it's been pretty surreal, man. I mean, I've been having a blast. And it, it kind of reminds me that everybody's, we're all humans, you know, we're all people. And it's just when I meet these people, of course, I get a little fanboyish. But at the end, it's kind of like everybody's just human and we're just talking and just talking about nothing, you know. But it's pretty cool to just sit there and, and mingle, man. I'm I'm loving it. Well, like I told you before, Mario, most people get put it on, turn into character, have some fun. I had one guy literally wrote me a long email from Ireland. I'm like, you know, at first I'm like, OK, what's up? What happened? And he's like, well, I got a flat tire. And I just happened to be able to pull up just in front of my house. I put the old man mask on. It's a little dark, dark outside. I went up to the door, changed my voice, and got them to change my tire for me. And they didn't even know it was me. Oh, man. Is that crazy or what? So we get stories like that every day. Oh, man. That's a good one, though. No, for that's sure. Fun, right? 
You know, and uh, man, like I said, I mean, we tried doing this before, man. Unfortunately, Braxton couldn't get on this today, but uh, we we look forward to bringing you guys back on. You know, hopefully, do this uh, whenever you guys have availability, and and just sure. be able to uh, stories and talk about what's going on and and what people can look forward to. But of course, uh, they can follow you guys on social media. I mean, you guys post a lot on Facebook, on Instagram, and uh, of course, they want to get a hold of the of you guys as far as product. You know, they can go to the website, correct? Oh yeah, ZagoniStudios.com. Nice and easy. Oh I, yeah. I'd love for you guys, you know, for you guys to interview uh, Tony and Rich and Phil and Mike, you know, and even now get uh, get them in if possible. The tour would be cool, and we have a great artist that we're working with now. Uh, uh, Billy Weisstrom retired. He's a master, just an absolute legend in the industry, and now we're working with Aaron Lewis, and he's, uh, he's a great guy and a good artist. So it'd be nice for you guys to reach out and have a conversation with them too, a different perspective. In fact, Aaron's going to be out at Monster Palooza next week. I know, and I had seen that, and I mean, there's uh, two events that I've already missed only because of timing, but I look forward to it, man. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure every every event that I attend, I'm going to be looking for your mask, man, because I know they're out there, so they're selling it. I'm going to be taking photos and, you know, plugging you guys in, because of course, Thanks. you know, you can get back to the work, man. Yeah, thank you. We want everybody to enjoy it. If somebody has an idea of what they want us to make, just send us a message on a post, comment on a post, send the ideas. We'd love it. No, no, for sure. And I've got quite a few, so I'm definitely going to be plugging that in. But, my man, I do appreciate your time. Uh, next time, for sure, we'll, we'll bring some more people in. You know, we'll get a few more stories and a few more plugs as far as how everybody's enjoying this this nice, uh, you know, ride because it's been a – Pretty sure it's a roller coaster ride when it comes to, to work, but you gotta enjoy it, man. So I, I appreciate your time, my man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us on. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Everybody out there, of course, once again, this is Spider, the Coming Soon Podcast. Till next time, follow up.